everyone, and welcome to the Wealthy Lala Show with myself, Lori Larson. Today is episode 203. Ah, oh, it's, it's raining here, so that's really nice. We haven't had rain for quite a while, and uh, we got our canola crop in the other day, so this is just beautiful for the, all those little seeds. You know, actually, that's one thing <clears throat> that before, I, I do have some cards, and we are going to do a little mini reading today. But you know, it's popping that uh, one of the things that I've been learning is that, you know, you can actually talk to, um, uh, you can actually talk to seeds and uh, you can talk to, I don't know, other things. Like you can talk to the equipment, you can talk to the weather, you can talk to the ground, you can acknowledge it, be grateful for it, thank it for you know, um, you know, so like, say if you have a garden or you have some plants or something, you can, you know, ask the, the soil to contribute to you and to the plants and, and to let it let you know when it needs to be, you know, watered or fertilized, or if it needs anything, you know, make it really loud. I noticed this morning, like we have some tomato plants and some pumpkin and squash plants in the house and some corn and I could hear them going take me outside like I saw it was raining and uh, it's only plus seven celsius here um, so I actually asked the plants because I could hear them talking to me like and what I mean when I say when you can hear something talking to you is that it keeps popping into your head like if it keeps popping into your head, there's some kind of information or awareness for you with that. And so you just keep like pop, pop, you know, it's like talking to you. Like that's what I mean by talking to you so, or, or talking to me. And uh, so I actually asked the plant. So I was like, I saw the temperature. It was like plus seven. I was like, oh, um, I, that was a point of view. And so I said that I asked the tomato plant, so truth, would you like to go outside? and they were like, yes. And so I took them outside and put them out on our hot tub on our, our deck. And then I asked the corn, truth, would you like to go outside? Well, actually, what I did was I put the squash in and everything that was in one pan outside, and I put the tomatoes outside after talking and asking them if they would like to. And then when I went and did my meditation, I could the corn were talking to me and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about the corn because they were sitting in a completely different room. So I was like, you know, you want to go outside too? And it was like, yeah. So I went and I took them and I put them up on, you know, outside and on the hot tub in the rain. And um, I love that. So life talks to us. And so I can ask, you know, you can ask the rain to contribute. And actually when you ask life to contribute to you, and when you're willing to receive the contribution of the, you know, God source divine universe, that's when you receive those talkings and you get those awarenesses where it's like, you know, put me outside in the rain right now. Or, you know, when you go to plant something and something tells you not to, or something keeps sort of distracting you and you're like, jeepers, I should have planted this three days ago. Well, what if, because you've been asking for life to create ease for you, what if you've been asking for um, the universe to contribute to you and you, you're asking for a beautiful, healthy, luscious garden and the universe is aware that if you plant this three days later, the timing of that is just going to create greater for you, for the seeds, for the land, you know, the land or the garden, the dirt that you put it in. Like, isn't that, isn't that just so fun? Um, because I, I don't know, like, I mean, I feel like so much of what we've been sort of taught is, you know, you kind of, you come into work or to this life, you grow up, you go to school. Now, I realize things have changed a lot, but I'm going to say this is a perspective that I was raised with and that was very heavily embedded and ingrained in society where I live is that you, you know, you kind of, you get born you you play then you go to school you got to get serious you got to get a career you got to meet someone you got to get married have kids and then you you know retire at a certain age and then you and have hopefully grandkids if you want them and then you die kind of thing or you travel after you retire and 
what I've noticed, jeepers, I went and I lost my train of thought. Where the heck was <laughs> that? so funny. Oh my gosh, the train left the station without carrying me with it. <laughs> oh no. Oh, well anyways, I'm just going to ask for it. If it's relevant and creates greater, would it please come back to me? So, <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, I didn't, see? Thank you. I just ask, I give it space, and it comes back to me. So, <clears throat> to me, when everything is so pre-programmed like that, it, there's, there's, it's kind of boring. Like, there's an element of no, like, yes, there's a safety element to it. There's a security, there's a certainty. And it can also be boring. And now for each of us, what's going to create something being boring or not boring is going to be different. We all have varying degrees of that. Um, but isn't it still fun when somebody randomly calls you and then you go out for lunch or you hear from someone you haven't heard from in a while or you go to the grocery store and you run into someone or you meet really lovely people or, you know, but that's, life has its randomness and it's fun and it's uh, inspirational parts throughout the days. And um, so anyways, um, I I just... I find that knowing that I can engage with the elements and the elementals and the quantum entanglements and the field and the plants and the grass and the dirt, and that I get the awareness that it actually talks to me back, that's fun. Like it makes life more juicy. <laughs> so... Anyways, so I've been asking this year, you know, to, you know, for the fields to contribute to me for, and, and, and being grateful for it. And that the equipment that's used in the field, like thanking it for its contribution and that, you know, the guys as they're working with the field, they're, you know, in a great state or as great as they possibly can be for that day. And that there's a gratitude without, through the whole process and that we'd love to have a bumper crop and to keep us posted as to what's required with the bumper crop and, you know, when to spray if, we're, if it's required to spray or fertilize or whatever. And, um, you know, it's more than just like going out there and planting a crop. So, you know, it keeps it engaging is what I love about that. So anyway, so there's my little rant for this morning. So I have two cards in front of me that um, from the card deck, the sec secret language of light transmissions from your soul. And this is by Denise Jarvie, J-A-R-V-I-E. So I got two cards, two cards wanted to be pulled. So um, you guys left or right you know, uh, close your eyes, take a big breath in, uh, blow it out. Now ask a question or allow the cards just to tell you, is it one, both, right, left cards? Um, is there, you know, is it both cards or is it just something within the cards that's going to speak to you, not the cards itself, just something that's shared? You know, allow and ask the universe, the cards to be really loud what it is, if you are listening to this, what you need to hear, okay? And what's for you, all right? Now, I'm looking at these cards, and the left card is is the one that is happens to be popping for me. So I'm going to start with that one. Here we go. Ooh, wellness. Ooh, that's beautiful. Oh, okay. Um, let's just see. I'm just going into the book here, see what the book has got to say here. Wellness, you are entering a time when your body will become stronger. If you've been sick, you are on your way to feeling better. Begin to focus on a sense of well-being. If you are healthy, you will be inspired to strengthen your body through yoga or another form of exercise. Your body is enlightened and knows how to heal itself. Every feeling, be it pain, butterflies, excitement, or love, is a message from one part of the self to another. Tune into your body through meditation and ask what you can do to improve your well-being. So in this particular image, uh, behind the human in this image, 
the flower of life is the flower of life, a symbol that represents the process of creation. It's made up of overlapping circles that are re a repeating expression of the first circle. It's a geometric metaphor reminding us that the nature of life is continual expansion. Your body takes you everywhere you go. So acknowledge, thank, and love it. Oh my gosh. Wow. And for those of you, this really popped when I read this. Um, behind the human is the image of the flower of life, a symbol that represents the process of creation. So if this card was light for you, is there something about creation that is showing up for you in your life or that desires to show up or it's an invitation for you to create something? Okay, card number two, people. What do we have? Oh, rem remembrance. God, these are beautiful cards. Holy mackerel. Wow just stunning. Okay, this is number 11. Oh, I'm excited to see what this one's going to say. Oh, this is giving me goosebumps. You are ready to live your life from the wisdom of your heart. You may have be been citing 1111 as a reflection of this. So like on clocks and stuff. If not, you you can expect to be receiving this sign soon. You may see it on a clock, a phone number, a receipt, or in a dream. With this wisdom, fresh and innovative ideas will flow into your mind as new ways to live your life. No one else has to change their ways, only you. Live from your heart, be an inspiration, and discover a new world. Some call 1111 an awakening code. You must have awoken on some level to receive it. It's a sign that you're much more than you think you are. 1111 has many different explanations because we're all asking different questions. There is no right or wrong meaning, but at the heart of 1111 is a loving, intelligent energy that will encourage you towards your soul where you will remember the truth of you. Oh, beautiful. Wow, I'm really getting like from this reading, it, it is about creation also, you know, um, so you don't always have to take something at face value. So for me, the card I pulled or the card that was lighter for me was wellness. And I really get that that's what I'm getting is, you know, keep kind of keep going, Lori, like what you're choosing, what you're doing is actually creating something in your world with your body. And then I'm getting for people that don't necessarily have that in their world, that this reading is largely about creation and allowing yourself to really expand on the creativity and the creation in your life. And one of the things I've been discovering for myself too is that we, we've, we've sort of been taught that creation is just, you know, music or, or um, you know, art and or creating classes or something like that and I've discovered it so much more like my daughter had a baby here uh just recently what 15 Oh, she's 12 days old now well little, little peanut and the next day uh, my daughter's sister-in-law so they're both married to brothers she had a baby so 11 hours later and um on Monday, so just a few days ago, I actually whipped up some meals and some muffins and some cookies, and I took it to both of the new mums. And um, I really realized that that is a very creative energy and thing for me, like the process of enjoying the cooking and the music and the audios that I was listening to while I was cooking. And then the gift, the giving, the gifting to them and taking it to their houses and getting to hold each of the lovely little sweet girls, because they're both girls. One is Olivia and one is Madeline. Madeline is my granddaughter. And, um, you know, getting to talk to the mums and getting to have a visit and then coming home. And then it was great because I made enough for us too for supper that night. And it was a really creative, expansive, fun day. Those are things that we don't often acknowledge as being a contribution in the same way as a job or, you know, making money with through clients or through work or however, or for farming or whatever, like these nurturing things that we do as 
largely as women are massively creative in this in this world and in this life and so if you have gifts like that and you're a beautiful woman who stays at home or is a part-time stay-at-home mom or you're a person who loves to like i remember when i was working i always worked part-time um but when i was working at the hospitals uh, I used to be the one who would often bring in baking and I would love to plan something for someone's birthday. And that is a creation. Those are things that we don't necessarily walk away and label with money, but they create, they create in this world. They have an energetic free frequency. They have a, uh, a currency to them, a vibrational currency that is beyond or not beyond but it has a vibrational currency as money has is a currency. So they're not different. They're just, they're, well, they're not, I mean, one's not better than the other. That's what I mean. They're just different. So anyways, look at your beautiful life. See where you're creative um, in ways that you don't even know that you can say that you're creative. And oh my God, enjoy these cards. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And uh, thank you so for so much for listening. The wealthy Lala at gmail.com.